This weekend, the world is coming to Santa Fe for the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market. Now in its ninth year, the market is the largest of its kind, hosting artists from the farthest corners of the globe. And I am so pleased to introduce you to the market's founder, Judith Espinar. Welcome back, Judy. Oh, it's so nice to be here, Nikki. Thank you. So good to have you once again. And I'm so happy to also say joining us today is Anne Lawrence, who owns the Anne Lawrence Collection. Amazing work. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you for Thanks. having me. Me. And I always say you adorn our set so, so beautifully. I mean, it can't get better than this. And I know that everybody out there wants to understand how you even conceived the idea of the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market in the first place. Wow. <laughs> it was sort of, the first time was more like, let's have a, let's have a circus or something right, like you right. do when you're a kid. And then we got together a group of people who love folk art. And of course, Santa Fe is world famous for its Indian market yes. and its Spanish market. And people know that we do great cultural markets. Yeah. So we decided, well, we'd have to do a great one to promote our wonderful Museum of International Folk Art, which is the largest museum of international folk art in the world. In the world, everybody, in the world. And the collection is astounding and the exhibits are beautiful. So when you're at the folk art market this week, mm -hmm. come up and see it. Nikki's coming yes. to the market, I, oh, so I'll you have there. to come and meet her. Well, you know, I know a lot of people out there are thinking, we're really all over the world? I mean, how many artists are you actually expecting from all over the different countries, all over the globe? How many countries? About a, I think right now we're exactly the 100 and, oh, countries is 54, wow. and 164 artists will oh, be here with beautiful, beautiful work. What a great opportunity. I'm so excited not only for the artists, but obviously for all the patrons who are going to be able to see this live and in person. And, you know, the market literally changes lives. And we talked about this a little last time, but for those who missed, will you tell us a little bit about how these celebrated artists are actually going to be impacted? Yes. The, um, first of all, it's important to recognize that we do have a few artists in the market who are internationally known for their work. Right. But for the most part, folk artists come from villages all over the world mm -hmm. where they have been working in families and communities that yeah. have been practicing these trades, these uh, techniques, these crafts mm -hmm. for generations. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes as much as a thousand years, believe it or not. That's amazing. And so they come to the United States for the first time and, one, and, and of course, they do end up earning quite a bit of money. The average booth last year earned almost $17,000. Oh, my good. Oh, and, and this is 90%, good. 90% <laughs> goes home with the artists. That's wonderful. So oh, it, and they it, deserve it. It impacts their communities as well as them. And they send their children to school. They can um, bring water, a pump water into their community. Okay. Instead of many times women would be walking with jugs mm -hmm. for four hours, two hours going and two hours back. Gosh. Now that they have water in their village, they can spend more time weaving or potting or crazy? doing their art. To think, and I said this to you last time, but to think how much we take things for granted, just a, just a jug of water, how important that is and how this helps these people. And and you specialize in exotic textiles. And so tell everybody how you're involved with the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market. Well, I've been involved with the market and the decorating. Judy has some great ideas about how it should be sort of presented to the world. Yes. And people that come, all the visitors, and it's just, it's delightful. It's mm. a feast for the eyes. Oh, yeah. And you can um, see right so here. how could you not be, you know, involved? And so sure. I was involved at that level. And then the artists, from my point of view, mm -hmm. I love to purchase the things for my studio that sure. I can make beautiful things out of. Oh yeah, and you which do we have make some here. beautiful things. Let's talk about some of the pieces that we have with us today because they're just spectacular. Well, one of the things we have, and he is, you were talking about world-renowned mm -hmm. artists, He's represented in San Antonio, Texas. He's also represented in San Miguel de Allende. His name is Angel Ortiz, and he okay. makes these burnished uh, pots. His beautiful. family has made them. They're from Tonala, and I think it's very beautiful. This is Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. And um, the pot is, as you can see on, this, on the um, TV monitor, that yeah. is just beautiful florals, and oh, he yeah. does people. And this is a... Um, I think that it's a cart, a donkey cart pulling, oh my gosh. pulling whatever. Anyway, this and this pillow is from Ayacucho, from Peru, Can and we put it. a um, wow. a silk back on it, and, and its own down insert, and just beautiful. I think and the runner. Oh yeah, that runner done, is. These gorgeous. are done in traditional, in the traditional weaving, and also the traditional embroidery. 
Wow. of the country. And, and when you talk about the weaving and the embroidery, I mean, I think it's so important for the viewers to understand the work that goes into every stitch, the amount of time that every artist spends, and that's what makes it so especially unique. Well, I think if you look at the colors, they mm -hmm. really have a good color sense. Yes. Those artists that are really, truly into what they're doing, mm -hmm. they're very, very talented people. Absolutely. And they have done these techniques for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. um, a piece like this, Pillow, is Beautiful. also from Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. One of the countries that will be represented at the market. Wow. And it's all embroidered in the traditional fashion. So is the coverlet on the table. And they use a backstrap loom to weave the silk. Okay but they're so adept mm -hmm. at embroidery mm -hmm. that they can put these three pieces together even though it's not all embroidered at the same yeah. time. Isn't that and cool? it all matches. That's amazing. That it is, is amazing. So can these pieces basically merge with different kinds of interior designs in your own homes? Absolutely. Um, you can use the Uzbekistan piece as a bedspread. Okay. You can oh, add to yeah. it, for example, with silk and make a bedspread out of it where you could use it as a tablecloth as it is. Gosh. You can use these uh, coverlets as pillows. They're yeah. flat. Usually okay. you can buy them flat. Okay. They're finished. They have beautiful little trim on the edges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This was a square piece. It had a rather plain border uh -huh. around the edge. And so you can use that as your, your um, selfage edge. Sure, sure. A seam allowance, I should say. And we put silk on the back of it. The same with this piece. Um, this, this is could, beautiful. This is a Canton border from India. Wow. And um, it's all silk and it's all hand embroidered. <gasps> lovely? Oh, yeah. It's a stitch that they've used for many, many, many years in um, their, they use it in their dupatas, which is the shawl. They use them in their saris. And uh, you could use this as a shower curtain. You could use it as a bed. Oh, wow. You could use it as curtains. You could, huh? I didn't even and think it has of these that. Be this beautiful border. So it yeah. already tells you mm -hmm. in many ways what it wants to be. Oh, it does. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a good way to say it. And if you I get one to really get technical about it, you can turn the edge back because it's selvage to selvage. Oh, so yeah. you don't even have to really line it unless How you want nice. to. And we're going to see tons of things like this, I know, yes. at the market where people are going to be able to say, well, this is something I could picture in my home, or this is something I could picture in my office, or whatever it is, and something as a gift. I mean, this is going to be an extravaganza <laughs> of, of just, I mean, honestly, you think about a child in a candy store. This is unbelievable. And one of the things that can happen to you aesthetically when you experience this mm -hmm. is you can begin to learn about the sensibility of different cultures. Oh, good point. Latin America, for example, is very much into doing these combinations of pale colors with bright colors. Yes, yes. And it, and it has beautiful. a festive feeling that is different mm -hmm. from the festive feeling, for example, from Uzbekistan. Yeah. And you start to recognize what's important to these people, too, by exactly. looking at a pot, for example, and seeing how they're celebrating their environments sure. with the colors and the leaves yes. and one of their favorite festivals, which is the Day of the Dead. Yeah. It's an extraordinary it's example, Anne. And before you go, I have to ask you real quickly about that beautiful statue as well. What is that? Um, this will also be at the market. Her name is Magdalena, okay. and she's from the state of Oaxaca, and she is actually a medical doctor. You're kidding. And she sells That's her pottery. Beauty. She's a sixth generation Oaxacan potter. Oh my God. And she sells this black pottery that she makes to earn income so that she can help the poorer people get medications wow. and medical treatment. How special is that? Well, I know everybody watching now wants to get to the main, the main event. How do they get there? Where can they go for more information? Yes, go to our website, www, of course, mm -hmm. folkartmarket.com. Dot org. Okay. The market opens on Friday evening at 6.30. Yes. And we hope to see you at the market. Yes, and there'll be plenty of options for shuttles and parking, and you can take the train, everything. Yes, and take the rail runner. Yes, the rail runner, It'll for sure. take you right to the, to the shuttle, and they'll drop you off at the door of the market. Fabulous. Judy, and thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. It's been a pleasure, and we're so excited about this weekend. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Let's look at more stuff. Oh, my God.